Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, on this Monday evening. Boy, has a lot gone on over the past week. Michael Cohen, North Korea, all sorts of things circling around the President of the United States. Some of them fantastic, as we will share with you what's going on in North Korea, and some of them not so fantastic with regard to the charade. The show, the greatest show on earth, ladies and gentlemen, brought to us by Michael Cohen and the Democrats of the United States Congress. So let's start with that. What are the takeaways? What are the takeaways I've been asked by the mainstream media and others with regard to the Cohen testimony? Two major takeaways, folks, and this is something to think about. One, it's interesting that Michael Cohen, and by the way, I was surprised he actually admitted this on the air. It was interesting that Michael Cohen admitted that he met with the Democrats, including the chairman of the committee where he had the hearing at before, before he went to testify. He met with the Democrats, folks, in preparation for the hearings. He went so far as to say at one point that there were some questions that were being reviewed by the Democrats with him. Now, doesn't that sound like a real fix? Remember, he was called a fixer. Well, maybe the fixer in this case are the Democrats on that committee. So Michael Cohen admits that he met with the Democrats. He admits he met with the chairman. He admits that there were some uh, uh, conversations between him, perhaps his lawyers, and the Democrats even before the hearing started. That's the first takeaway. The second takeaway, Michael Cohen pretty much admitted that there was absolutely no evidence whatsoever with regard to any collusion between the President of the United States, his campaign, and Russia. What do you think of that? No collusion. And we've said that all along. It's been said all along by many, many law enforcement and judicial experts that there is absolutely not one shred of evidence with regard to the President of the United States and Russia collusion. Now let's get to the other points that Mr. Cohen brought to the American people and, and in fact, people around the world. He produced some checks. He talked about payments. He talked about hush money. He talked about a conversation between Roger Stone and the President in, in, the, in, in our office where Michael uh, Cohen was present. Roger Stone denies that he said anything to the President of the United States with regard to whether it be the uh, hush money payoffs, whether it be the information that uh, was received regarding the email dumps of WikiLeaks and on and on and on. Roger Stone denies that he had anything to do with any of what Mr. Cohen said. Mr. Cohen adamantly says that these conversations took place, adamantly says that Donald Trump then, or actually Donald Trump, President of the United States, uh, knew about these issues, that he had conversations with Roger Stone. So the question was asked, Mr. Cohen, where's the evidence? Show us the evidence. In fact, Mr. Cohen at one point said that for months and months and months he wanted to be exonerated with regard to uh, how the, the American people view him, that he searched all these boxes. Remember he said that? All these boxes, oh, I searched and I looked, and I had to get the information that I could bring here, that I could show you that I was telling the truth. So a congressman asked Michael Cohen, where's the boxes? Where's the evidence? Where's the documents? Cohen stumbled a little, and then finally he comes up with this excuse that the FBI took all of the documents and all of the boxes into their custody when they served him with a subpoena and they entered his home. The fact of the matter is, is that, at least in my view, there are no boxes and there are no documents. Another question that Mr. Cohen was asked, do you tape conversations? He said yes. How many conversations did you tape in a period of time that you were with Mr. Trump? Well, he said maybe 100, 200 times, uh, not only Mr. Trump, but there were other conversations with other people, and on and on and on. So, so the person questioning him regarding the taping established the fact that Michael Cohen tape records private conversations. But here's the significant point that came out of that little exchange, of that little bit of information that that congressman was able to extract from Michael Cohen. And it was this. Mr. Cohen, the question was asked, 
Did you tape the conversation in the room with Roger Stone and President Trump? And Cohen's answer was no. Where's the evidence? You taped everybody else that crossed your path, and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't have the, 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 the mind to tape this conversation? So, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a convicted felon, an individual who lied to Congress, who's upset that he did not get a White House job, and I could go on and on and on about Michael Cohen now looking to save his hide as we move forward in these investigations. Looking to do what? Pretty much establish that the book deal is coming, that the movie's coming, all kinds of things will be coming his way at the expense of not only the President of the United States of America, but also at the expense of the American people. So that's the way it is, folks. This is what we have, a charade going on. It is no coincidence, and I said this on the air throughout the entire week, it is no coincidence that the Democrat Party scheduled this hearing during the time when the President of the United States is in Vietnam speaking with the North Korean leader, which that, which that in itself will be a historical accomplishment by President Trump when he returns to the United States with significant concessions and significant headway in bringing peace to that peninsula there in Korea. So the mainstream media and other media outlets are not focusing on the president's accomplishments. They're focusing on what? A liar. A theatrical play in the United States Congress. That is what? Doing nothing. I was asked by reporters this week, how will this impact the president? How will it impact the 2020 election? Folks, I've got to tell you, I said this on the air and I'll say it right now. Minimal, if any, impact on the president's re-election efforts. He's going to win by a landslide in 2020. I have no doubt about it. I can share with you that what Michael Cohen did and what the Democrats did is put a fire, a fire in the belly of not only uh, the Trump's base, but in Republicans and, and I could tell you even some Democrat conservatives who are fed up with the charades of the United States Congress, fed up with the way they operate. I think it was said over and over again by people in Congress that they could be spending their time working on our health care, working on our uh, reduction of taxes, working on bring businesses into the country, working with, not against the President of the United States. It's amazing. They want to see President Trump fail, which means they want to see America fail. Look at, no matter who's in that office, I think we are obligated as Americans, and they are obligated as our representatives, regardless of what party they're in, to see to it that the President succeeds. They don't have to hug him and kiss him every day, and they don't have to agree with all of his policies. But to go down this very sad road, using the United States Congress as a weapon to once again try to bring the President down is outrageous. So what they've done and what they continue to do is simply this. Destroy, destroy, and destroy. Hinder, hinder, hinder. While the President of the United States is working hard to lift the American spirit up, the Democrat Socialist Party is working hard to drag the American spirit down. Well, all of this is going to backfire on the Democrats. It will backfire very soon. Within the next few days or so, the Mueller report will be out. We will all get a chance to look at that. It's pretty much certain that there will be absolutely nothing in there about any evidence or proof that there was any collusion with Russia. I'm sure there will be some political issues and some issues in there that will uh, cause some people to question the credibility of all of the people that have been dragged into this. But at the end of the day, it is very important for all of us to know that the President of the United States has been consistent, he has been transparent, he has always said and continues to say, and now Michael Cohen says that there's been no collusion with Russia. And I could go on and on and on, folks. What a charade. What an American tragedy. What a sad commentary 
for an already United States Congress that is equal to a train wreck. And boy, are they a train wreck. So we're going to move forward. And we're going to continue to work hard for the president. We're going to stand with him side by side. And we're going to work with him to do what? To continue to make America great again. So as I say, at the end of this day, what do we do? We pray for our country. We pray for our president. And we believe and know full well that there is a God above in control of all of this. And we pray that he keeps the shadow of his wings over the United States of America so that at the end of the day we could sleep tight at night knowing that we as a nation are in good hands. Thank you and good night.